I thought, I thought what I'd do today in, in talking about the art of winning and, and sustaining a culture of success, I suppose, I'd talk a little bit about, uh, about my life, um, about this little fat kid growing up in Auckland and then going on to, to arguably work, um, well not even arguably now, to work for the greatest sporting team ever, the All Blacks in terms of success rate. So in 1998 I retired and the first question I was asked was what was the most memorable game you played for the All Blacks? And I didn't even have to think about it. I said 1993. British Lions at the Athletic Park in Wellington. It was the worst game I played for the All Blacks. And I can still remember walking off the field. And I said to my great mate Gavin Hastings, who was the captain of the British and Irish Lions, I said, Gav, you watch this nation of four million people turn on this all-black team. And it was the worst week of our life. And I still remember walking down into the changing room at, room at Athletic Park, and the team was sitting down. And I said to them, make a mental note of the way you feel now, and make sure we never, ever feel this way again. One of the, the great all-black sayings, is celebrate success, but park it quickly. Remember your losses more than your wins. And I wanted to write a book about my time of captaining the All Blacks, and that was from 1992 to 1997-98. We'd had a hugely successful period after the World Cup in 1987. Uh, no one could touch us. We won the World Cup in 87. 88 and 89, we were beating teams by 30, 40 points. Admittedly, South Africa wasn't playing. And by 1990, um, I think we started to take our position for granted. Became a little bit fat and lazy. And by 1991, the wheels had fallen off. We thought we were the best players in the world. And I still think going to the World Cup, we had the best players in the world, but unfortunately, we didn't have the best team in the world. And we lost, lost to a much better team, uh, the Australian team, who had beat us in the semi-final. Game was over by half time. You need to be arrogant to be successful with a degree of humility but leave it on the field. So I started playing rugby when I was four years old. So I hopped on the set of scales down at College Rifles, our local rugby club, and I was playing with 12-year-olds. <laughs> now, that is not a lot of fun, because they, they love little fat kids. Um, <laughs> what I didn't realise, in those formative years, the first 20 years of my life, there'd been five key messages had been ingrained into me that I didn't even know about until I wrote this book. And two were from my father, and three were from my accounting teacher at Sacred Heart College. And these are the five pillars of the All Black success, without doubt. Two from my father, kicking the ball around the backyard. My brother and I were playing rugby, and with that, Dad came over and he said, Boys, stop what you are doing. You do not need to play rugby union. All I want you to do is to play a team sport and make sure you enjoy it. We had 15 rugby fields. We trained on field number 16, which was our baseball diamond, our hockey pitch, our cricket oval in the summer, and it's where the three Ds trained in 1977 to be greeted by our accounting teacher, Guy Davis. He changed our lives. He said, there's three things that I want from the three Ds in 1977. The first thing, everyone on this team is equal. No matter who you are, we're all equal. The second thing I want, is when you turn up here on a Monday night, I want you to turn up with a bit of attitude that you want to be here. And the third thing is all I want from you individually is to be as successful as you can be. And what was he saying to us? He was saying to us, I want you to be a winner. Winning is the most important thing in life. So I want you to do everything you can to make sure you're a winner. And if you don't win, at least you know you've tried your best. I'm not talking about cheating, but I'm talking about doing everything you can individually to make sure you are as successful as you can be. So why don't we, our children, say to them winning's important? And it's no different in business in terms of the attitude of the people that work for you. And it's no different in terms of the All Blacks. That's why they are the best team in the world because they prepare better than anyone else. And with preparation comes sacrifice, which most people don't like. I expect the All Blacks to win. If our cricket, our cricket team comes second, if our netball team comes second, if our football team comes second on the world stage, as New Zealanders, we go, bloody well done. You're boxed above your weight. If the All Blacks come second, it's a national disaster. It affects the economy, without question. 
The Prime Minister of my day was a guy called Jim Bolger, a lovely man. And he used to say, Sean, when the All Blacks win, I'd love to be the All Black captain. But when they lose, I'd much rather be the Prime Minister <laughs> of New Zealand. There's 35 living All Black captains. Um, and we meet once a year and we talk about this. We talk about the legacy of the jersey. Uh, to play for the All Blacks, you have to live in New Zealand. And the guys that play for the All Blacks could earn two or three times more money if they played offshore, if they played in England, if they played in France, if they played on Ireland, if they played in Japan, they could earn two to three times more money. Why do they stay in New Zealand? Because they want the All Black jersey. So it's important for us as ex-All Blacks, once an All Black, always an All Black, that we make sure we continue the tradition of the art of winning, making sure that we continue the legacy of the jersey is more intimidating than any opposition. It is so important. We talk a lot about culture. In your environment, you probably about talk about culture creates a successful business. For us, we talk about people create a successful team. Because the people are your culture. So you need to make sure you have the right people in the team. And that's what the All Blacks are like. They do the simple things better than anyone else. The way they were doing it yesterday is not gonna win tomorrow. So we're having to innovate all the time, analyze the opposition to make sure we're better. Never take our position for granted. Prepare as if you are number two. Never ever think you're good enough, Fitzy. Never think you're good enough. From 1986 to 1995 in Bloemfontein was the last time was I played 63 consecutive internationals because I didn't want to give the guy an opportunity on the bench. So I played 63 consecutive times. You go to training, you drop the ball. Why did you drop the ball? Before you do anything, ask yourself, is it good for the All Blacks? It's one of the great things about the All Blacks and New Zealanders is that we're humble people. Just get out there, do the job. Be a good loser to be a good winner. Be a good winner to be a good loser. All those sort of things that are so, so important. In 1998, um, I retired in 97 with a leg injury. Uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. I wanted to continue, I don't know why. I said I was going to retire after 95. Went to have a beer with my, my good mate afterwards with my wife. And uh, he said to me, you have to come back here in 96 and beat these buggers in their own country. And I thought that was a good enough reason. No one else had ever done it. Uh, so we did that. Uh, and then 97, I should have retired in 96 probably, but I couldn't let go. Why? Because of the fear of failure. What was I going to do next? Um, I like talking about the first half of my career because the second half of my career was a much better career. I was a much better player, and more importantly, I was a much better person. Uh, when people ask me, who did I used to play for? I love saying I played for the All Blacks.